Now this is this whole thing is one argument into in the print function. So I'm going to create a comma and create my second argument. I'm going to it's going to be very similar to this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And again, I don't want to, I know I'm going to exceed this line, so I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Before I break it, I type in the backslash and hit enter and paste that my second argument, right? This way. And my second argument is going to be class B sales. It's going to be the formatted version of class B sales formatted the same way. Also, since this is going to be actually a monetary value, I also want a dollar sign in front of it. So I'll put the dollar sign right here, a dollar sign right here. Okay, dollar sign in front of it. This is just a concatenation. A format, the format function returns a string. So we are concatenating a string with a string, a string, the, the string returned from the format function. When everything is formatted, it, it returns the formatted version as a string. All right, so this is just going to be joined together. That's why I'm put, putting a dollar sign here. All right, so class B sales over here is formatted. Okay, now that's my second argument. So I'm going to put the comma and put a third argument here. And I want to break it, so I'll type in a backslash and hit enter. Paste this class C sales. Format the class C sales here. To point. Well, I need a dollar sign here as well. Exit same way formatted. And then my last argument is going to be. Oh, before that, break this on the next line. It's going to be my total sales. That's just a sales report I'm printing. Total sales. And that's going to be the formatted version of the, va the variable total sales that is going to be passed to this function when it's called. Run it the same way, put a dollar sign in front of it here. All right, so now we're done. Now, by default, when you when you pass in arguments into the print function this way, when they are displayed, each argument is going to be, actually the arguments are going to be separated by space, okay, when they are displayed. So it's going to read class A sales with the, with the amount space, class B sales with the amount you know space well let's let's leave it and then let's see how it's displayed and then i think we're done i'm uh, not almost done almost done all right so now we th this is going to calculate the values for us we need to print the details right so let's call our function print sales report we have all our values here so all we have to do is pass it into the print sales report and the print sales report will print it all out for us in a formatted nice and in a nicely formatted way so the first thing I want to pass into the print sales report is class A sales. The second thing is going to be class B sales. Third, third thing is going to be class C sales. And the last thing is going to be total sales. Oops, total sales. Yep, total sale. Oh, well, sales. Sales is fine. <clears throat> okay. So the print report will just do that for us. So now we are done. We we'll probably have to do some cleanup, but I mean, once we display it, let's see how it displays. So let's go ahead and, and save this. I'm going to save it where I normally save the Python programs on the desktop in the folder. My PC is a bit slow always because I'm running stuff all the time. Okay, so desktop Python. All right, so again, I'm supposed to put this. I said this in the last program and I didn't do it. This is one of the programs in Chapter 5. I'm supposed to put it in Chapter 5 folder. I keep on forgetting. All right, so let me create a new folder in Chapter 5. I'll call it Stadium Seaton. Oops, normally I do a common case. Stadium Seaton. And then I'll save this here also the same way as Stadium Seaton.py. Okay, save it here. All right. See if we have any errors. Um, it's still loading. Let's see. Should see something here. Let me close the Python shell. Um, okay, nothing's happening. Oh, that's true. <laughs> nothing's supposed to happen. Yeah. Remember, I, I, it's funny because I mentioned this. Okay, so these, these are all functions. Okay, these are all functions. So we've defined them, but we haven't called them, so nothing is happening. Um, although we are calling these functions in main, main is also a function, and, and we haven't called main. In order for this all this to work, because they are in the function main, we have to call main for it to work. Okay. Although we are calling these function, nothing is happening because main oh, they are all defined in a in a function. Uh, they are all are uh, written in the main function, and main is a function itself. It hasn't been called. So let's go ahead and call main now here. Okay, this way. 
just like the way these functions were called here. All right, so now let's run this. Okay, so how many tickets were bought for class A? I'm going to say two. How many tickets were bought for class B? I'm going to say three. How many tickets were bought for class C? I'm going to say four. And now we can see class A sells $40, class B sells $45, class C sells $40. Total sales is $125. Now that's what I was talking about the print function. By default, when you pass in argument into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space separate in them. So this whole string here, or literal here, is considered to be one argument separated by a comma here. It's another argument with a comma, another argument with a comma, and, and the last argument. So, so you can see that class A sells, okay, there's a space in between here, and then class B sells, and a space here. Now you can change that default behavior by changing the separator value, SEP value, okay, the separator value, from changing it from a space to a new line character. Okay, by the new line character, the backslash N is a new line character. What it does is anytime the interpreter sees this back, the backslash N, it's going to move the position from where it's at, okay, the position of, um, basically you can think of it as a cursor or something, the position from where it's at to the next line. So anything that comes after this, uh, or basically, in this case, it's going to separate them with a new line character. After typing, the f after displaying the first literal, there's going to be a new line character, meaning after displaying the first literal, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line, and the next literal is going to follow on that next line, separated by another new line character, and then another literal is going to follow, follow that new line character and so on and so forth. So now I've changed the separator, the default separator. You put the comma here as, a, as an argument on its own. So a comma, SCP is equal to backslash N. Okay. So now let's run this again and then see what happens. So let's say four, three, two. And now we can see that they are displayed um, vertically. All right. So well, first of all, let's you know you can see that um, it's working. So let's see. Um, let's just test to see if it's working. Uh, Twenty class A tickets bought four. So we can see that um, yeah, four times twenty is uh, eighty. We can see that here. And then class B tickets was uh, fifteen. We bought three, so we can see it's forty-five dollars. Class C cost ten dollars. They bought two, so that's twenty dollars. And when you add them all together, you're getting one hundred and forty-five dollars. So we can see that this is working. So yeah, this is 125 plus 20, 145. So that's working. So that's working here. So um, basically we're done. But I just want to put a, a line break in between the questions, basically the questions asking for the ticket and then the display, the, the report. So let's do that. Um, th this is where we're asking for the questions. Um, that's, that's in main here. So after that, we can go ahead and just call the print function this way just a print function now when you call the print function this way and you type in something oops, oops. double quotes and you, and you type in something and you run it it's going to basically do what you've told it to do it's going to print that thing and just type in some test values it's going to print that thing you told it to, to print okay it's going to do do just that okay but but when it's done it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line by default the print function always ends with a new line character. After you've after you've it's printed what you've told it to print, it's ending with a new line character. So it prints what what have I told you to print over here, but, but it moves the position from this point to the next line. So anything that comes after this print is displayed on that next line. Okay. So because over here when we call the print, uh, the print sales report, the print sales report is printing this stuff, and then this print sales report comes after this they are displayed after this um, the, the, the string literal here. But that's because the new the print function always ends with a new new line character. After what I've told it to print, whatever I've told it to print, it's going to end it with a new line character. And then basically move the position from where it's at to the next line. Okay, move the position from where it's at to the next line. And anything that comes after that print function is displayed on that next line. So when you call the print function and pass in nothing, you are telling it to print nothing. Don't print this time this, this time around. You're telling it to print nothing. But by default, the print function always ends in a new line character. So when you call the print function this way by passing in nothing, you're basically telling it to print out nothing. But that's how it works. By default, it moves the position from where it's at to the next line. And anything that comes after, after anything that comes after this print function is displayed on that next line. So print function with nothing, you are telling it to print nothing. So it's going to go ahead and print nothing here. But it's going to move 
the position from where it's at, the position from where it's at to the next line here. So anything that comes after that print function is going to be displayed from here. So in essence, or basically what happens is when you call the print function this way with nothing in there, you are, you are basically printing an empty line. And then the way the print function works is by, def uh, by default, it's, go it's always ending with a new line character, moving the position from where it's at to the next line. And anything that comes after that is displayed on that next line. All right. So I just wanted to uh, point out that. That's one way to do it. There are, there are other ways to do it. Um, so when I test this out, we can see that there's a line here now. They're separating them. Okay, you can type in a report or, so, or whatever you want if you want to display it like that. Uh, another way you can do it is this, let's just go ahead and get, get rid of this. So when I run this the regular way, see now they're close together again. Another way, way we can fix this is now we know that th this is the function that's printing out the output, right? Um, yeah, this is a function printing out the sorry. This is a function printing out the output, the report. You know the report starts from here, okay? So the report, the print sales report is, is called here. Af um, after the questions, then the print print sales report is called here. So be, in the print sales report function, we can go here before it starts. We can also type in the backslash n, okay? Just like what we did with the backslash n somewhere around. Okay, now we are starting with the backslash, and that means that before you go ahead and print this 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 string here and continue, move the position from where it adds to the next line. So the position will be here. Okay, it will be it will be right here. Okay, right here. And if you can see it, yeah, right in front of this this first C here. Okay, but because of, of the new line character, because the interpreter sees a new line character, it's going to move the position from where it adds to the next line. Okay, here. So anything that comes after it now, from okay, to all, all the class A stuff, anything that comes after the new line character is displayed from here going, okay, from this line going. Okay, in, in, in other words, the character is going to move from here to here, or the position is going to move from here to here, basically cr creating an empty line here, and then anything that comes after that new line character is going to be displayed here. So that's also one way to fix it. So when I run this with that, with that new line character over there, I type in some numbers, you can see that there's a space here and it's working okay um, so yeah, that's another way to do that but I'm just going to move that and then stick with the regular print here without anything in here but again that's another way to do it so alright so I'm going to compile this and then try again with um, some big numbers 45 class A tickets 34 class B tickets and then 100 class C tickets and then $900 for the class class A 510 for class B, 1,000 for class C. Total sales is 2,410 dollars for the st uh, st entire sales for a day or for a match or whatever it is. All right. So now this program is working. We we created everything in functions. We didn't have to, you know. We, it, so that that's basically what chapter five is all about. So we created everything in functions, and um, it's working. We called it. In, we defined everything in main. The the program itself in main, and we called main. Remember, main is like the pro the program that's supposed to be called when the program starts. Sorry, main is the function that needs to be called when the program starts. So yes, that's what we did. All right. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then. Bye bye.